Are you struggling to pull comps and understand how to evaluate commercial real estate properties? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use CoStar on your phone, really simple and easy, of how to evaluate and understand how to pull comps like a pro. Hey everybody, my name is Henry Eisenstein. I'm a commercial real estate investor and broker, and I'm gonna teach you today on how to pull comps using CoStar. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a property that, that we closed on, just to use as an example, uh, so that you guys can kind of see how we went through the evaluation process on the investment side and as a broker, because we ended up brokering this deal. So what you're seeing here, uh, again, it's a commercial real estate property. It's actually a mixed use building. I wanna see if there's any extra pictures here on CoStar. So you can see here, there's actually a car wash right here, and then it's actually a retail strip center going on. It's actually at, at the very end here. It's not in very good shape, but you can also see in the back, there's a, a huge warehouse. There was a cell tower on it, which you can see here. You can see there's actually another building on the back left there. So it was actually three buildings in total. Um, again, this is the retail in the front where you can see the car wash, the self-serve, the retail, the uh, one large uh, warehouse building, and then there's a, it's like a flex building in the back. So what I want to explain to you here is now how do you evaluate this property? So one of my sales agents cold called this individual. We ended up getting this property as a lead a little while ago, and we built a rapport with this individual. Now, this individual, by the way, day one wanted like 4 million bucks, okay? He wanted $4 million, which by the way, there's very little income on this property to go off of because the property is in complete disrepair. Uh, he did not own the cell tower. You know, actually the image that you see right here on your screen, you know, is actually just in complete disrepair. I mean, it was just horrible, okay? Like there's holes in the ceiling. So, I mean, you could even see like the moss growing on the, on the facade here. So just not in great shape. So uh, this property, not in great shape, but huge opportunity because what you can see here is that if we click on property, you can see here this property is at the very bottom here, 5.28 acres. I mean, just a huge amount of land uh, on a prime piece of property because this is on Route 9 in Howell, New Jersey. Fantastic location. What's interesting here is that the building, yes, was built in quite some time ago, but the, the where it says square footage actually was larger. It was actually closer to 30,000 square feet, which we actually had to get measured. So we went into this thinking it was only 22,000 square feet and ended up being uh, near 30,000 square feet, but the property was in such disrepair and the income, there was only, there was virtually no income. Like, you know, if you look back to the pictures now, this entire piece, like I had mentioned, was vacant. This big warehouse building was completely vacant. So, which is like 10,000 square feet or so. Okay. And then the building on the side also had some vacancy and they didn't own the, so he did not own the cell tower. He sold the cell tower a while ago. Poor condition, a lot of vacancy, not a lot of income. So we ended up getting, you know, uh, putting this in front of a couple of buyers and we called up a couple of buyers. I think it was incredibly important important to note this because uh, I'm about to explain to you about how to pull comps in just a second here. But we put this in front of our, a few buyers. We basically just said, hey, give me give me an idea of what you're thinking with this, okay? Very, very interesting property. Guy was open to selling. It was an older gentleman, you know, fairly motivated to sell the property, but originally he wanted four million bucks. I'm like, I just want to get your gauge. And so I think it's important to realize that you need a few buyers that you can kind of just bounce ideas off of sometimes and basically just like, hey, here's a property. What do you think? What are you thinking? Like, what, what would you do to this property? What are a few ways to think about it? If you were to buy it, what would you do? We like having a few people with a bunch of different thoughts and opinions and different ways of looking at things. Like you put this in front of a developer, you put this in front of a guy who uh, only rehabs properties, you're, you're gonna hear a bunch of different responses from these types of individuals, right? If you go to a developer, you're gonna hear one way. If you go to a guy who does, doesn't develop and he only rehabs properties, you're gonna hear different stuff. So it's important to get these different opinions because it will allow you to start thinking through all these different ideas of what's possible on these properties, okay? Let's start pulling some valuations and understanding how to pull comps because I think it's really important to now, now you understand the context, I'm gonna you know, show you how to pull some type of comp here. So what's important to note is this. We're on in Howell, that's, this, that's the city, okay? This is close to where I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, and it's on Route 9. So Route 9 is a major corridor, okay? Major highway, a lot of commercial real estate on Route 9, very busy road. Right across the street, by the way, this is the property here on the right. This property right across the way is a Home Depot. Very, you know, great location. You know, right, again, right across the street from a Home Depot. A lot of commercial real estate up and down this quarter. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm actually going to go to filter and you can go to, I'm gonna do a couple things real quick. So we're gonna go to sale first and we're gonna to go to retail up top and then you're gonna to go to sale date within, we're gonna first do the last two years just to kind of get a gauge. Uh, there's 20 properties because I wanna be able to see it. Now I want you to understand something. Obviously two, you know, two years ago, 2022, is uh, uh, not a fantastic time to look at uh, valuations because interest rates were so cheap. But typically when we pull comps, we only wanna do the last six months, maybe the last 12 months. So I'm gonna go back two years on purpose, okay? And by the way, I haven't pulled these comps in quite some time, so I'm doing this live with you guys. So what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna draw, I think uh, it's Polygon, right? So. I'm allowed to draw up and down Route 9. 
I'll do like one of those weird looking shapes. Now I'm just gonna go highlight root nine because if you try to go off of root nine, it's not gonna be very, very similar. But I do the last two years on purpose because I want you to I want to look at something. I just want to basically go through and see how many of them are actually anywhere close to a decent comparable. Okay. So the first one you see here at the top was actually a Best Buy that had traded. We can look into that. Uh, built in 07, sold in 2024 for 308 dollars a square foot. Not too bad actually as a comp. Uh, but we'll come back to that in just a second. I'm gonna kind of fly through a few of these. This is 2,000 square feet. Looks like you know decently newer construction in 2016. Sold in 2023 for $675 a square foot. I mean, just honestly, kind of crazy that somebody would pay that price per square foot. Uh, probably an owner user. This one, uh, a huge retail center. This is sold as part of a portfolio. Uh, I guess these are two properties right next to each other because actually I'm very familiar with these two plazas because what I'm looking for here is to get an idea of actually, are these next to each other? No, okay, so these are two different complete centers. So these two, I mean, this is honestly a fantastic deal. This guy this guy got a great price. You know, I'm actually completely shocked that this is what they sold for. So this property sold for $38 a square foot. I mean, a absolute steal of a price. 38 bucks a square foot, $4.6 million total for both these properties. I mean, honest to God, I, I mean, this is probably one of the best purchases I've ever seen. I mean, again, this is unbelievable. Kudos to you if you bought this deal. I am I am quite proud. This is a fantastic deal. Someone just absolutely stole these properties. That's just one example. We're gonna keep it going here. Uh, this property sold is 1,500 square feet, sold for $620 a square foot. This one is a daycare, no price. It's in a portfolio. We're just looking for things that share the pricing. This one, Wow, that's actually an old shop, right? Uh, sold in 2022, did not go. Uh, we're looking for only retail centers, so we're trying to see, if, okay, here you go. This one is actually pretty interesting. So this property sold for almost $200 a square foot, 45,000 square feet. This is actually a very, very interesting comp. You know, a bunch of smaller tenants and a couple larger tenants, just looking through here. This property, uh, you can see at the price per square foot, 200 bucks a square foot, this is about right. Uh, you can see here, you know, rent is around $19 a square foot, sold for $9.1 million. This is in two, uh, 2022, interest rates were just starting to come up here. If you look at all the strip centers that have traded, this one sold for 199, which is actually about, this is about like market value. Then you see this one building that sold for these two crazy, unbelievably great deals, 38 bucks a square foot, God bless them. You can ignore the one we're gonna be talking about. This one is a little bit too small of a comp, and I think that you know like the smaller size buildings are tending to sell for higher price per square foot because they're probably this property is on a decent amount of acreage. Let's see, almost an acre, you know, in a newer construction building. I mean, this is probably sold to an owner operator. Fantastic average rent, twenty seven dollars a square foot. So just a you know uh, you know I think they actually overpaid to be honest with you, but. Anyways, uh, not gonna dive into that. We're gonna talk about this one retail center, but it all makes sense. And then this one sold for $308 a square foot, $9.25 million, also almost four acres. I mean, this is just a, a fantastic parable here. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to see if there's any details that we can look into. So class A, 100% leased, it was owner occupied, got it, cool. So this property here gives you an idea. I mean, look, you're buying a Best Buy. I mean, this could be a very, very interesting purchase. And you know, it says juice from the raw, which is honestly, I well, that was the old owner, um, or possibly even the new owner is taking over this building. So, because I, I actually believe that, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I actually toured that pro or was near that property. I think the Best Buy actually went out of business. This property sold for $308 a square foot. So, as you can tell, when the property is actually in decent shape, the property sells for a good price, right? So, you see $308 a square foot. You know, you ignore these two because there's not even close to accurate. $620. I'm um, sorry, I passed over the other one. $675. I mean, great prices per square foot. But if you really look at like probably the best comp, which is this one, which is $200 a square foot. That's a probably a pretty appropriate comp because um, you got the retail here. It doesn't include the warehouse uh, in the back, obviously, because this, this is not that type of property, but that was the next step, right? So you go to for sale. I just want to see what the prices per square foot are trading for, right? So now I'm going to go to industrial, uh, see if there's any other industrial properties selling for $255 a foot. And obviously this one didn't trade, but $255 a foot for 10,400 square feet sold in February, 2023. This kind of gives you a decent idea of what the market's like so 255 and it looks okay i mean it's not exactly in great shape um we're gonna go to property here see if there's any other details we can try to pull off from this 100 percent lease it's got four drive-ins then we're gonna go to summary if you look at some of these pictures uh not exactly spectacular you know a little bit of an idea that sells for a price per square foot of two over 250 so pretty interesting so when it's in halfway decent shape right and it's 100 percent lease you're going to be getting over 200 dollars a square foot for industrial and on that property that we you know our subject property let's go back there is about ten thousand square feet of retail in the front. 
right? So this big building in the front was about 10,000 square feet of retail. Uh, sorry, I'm going to summary. This whole building in here was about 10,000 square feet. So that 10,000 square feet will sell for about 200 bucks. And then the other 20,000 square feet, which is the warehouse and the other one in the back, like we had mentioned, uh, will each, or which were, let's just call it about around 10,000 square feet each. Those would sell for roughly 200 to $250 a square foot each. So when it's all fixed up, which by the way, this property needed, I mean, easily a million plus dollars, okay? In, in worth of work. 20,000 square feet worth of industrial. Again, these are round, quick round numbers times 250. Once it's all beautiful and renovated, fully leased, you're gonna get 200 to 250. Call 250 in this instance, that's $5 million. Plus, we're gonna be doing 10,000 square feet times 200 bucks. That's 2 million, so you got plus the $5 million of industrial. So the building will be worth about $7 million when it's done. And it needed well over a million. I mean, maybe maybe $2 million worth of work, to be honest with you. This property needed a ton, a ton of work. So what's interesting to understand about this property is the a couple things. Number one, there was again no income. So you had to buy this property with a hard money loan or in cash, okay? It would be impossible to get a loan on this property uh, or a traditional loan on this property. So what we did was that we ended up uh, finding a buyer who saw the potential of this property. Because honestly, I mean, if you leveled the whole thing, you probably could end up building something pretty awesome as well. But the problem is that you're not gonna pay $4 million for dirt. And we had a number of people make an offer on this property. And the best offer we ended up coming back with was this the uh, offer you see here, which was for $2.6 million, which you can see down here, we ended up selling this property uh, to a friend of ours. So, so we ended up selling this property to a friend of ours uh, who, you know, again, great price, great property, great opportunity here, but again, needed several million dollars worth of work. That's including like connecting the water. This property didn't even have sewer hooked up. Okay. And everything was on, you know, a septic system, which is kind of wild. Even connecting that with several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, again, the buildings in distance, you know, complete disarray. Just so many things that needed to be repaired. All in all, we ended up putting this in front of a several buyers and ended up getting our best offer at 2.6. What ends up happening here is that regardless of the comps you're pulling, because you're going to be going on here, you can be going to lease, I can give you an idea, go to retail, you can go to sign date, and let's just do the last 12 months. Again, this is if we were going to be buying it today. 13, this is all properties in that corridor. And I'm just going to run through this super quickly. So uh, this is the retail side first, and let's see if anything will come up because all these are not sharing with me what they're paying. It's saying that it's available, that, you know, spaces between 1100 and 13,400 are available for at $17 a foot. You can see that it's being listed right now at $17 triple net. Uh, or $17 triple net uh, is what they're asking for and what they've actually also signed for, which is a good comp. So $17 triple net. Let's see if we can look at another one. This one here, let's see if it comes up with anything. So places are being offered from $15.50 to $16.50 and they signed at $15.50 triple net very recently. So uh, that's also another very good comp. And then we can see this one here, you know, they're offering at $17.50, offering, uh, they actually signed a lease at $18.50 triple net and they're offering a few other spaces at $17.50 triple net. So these are all right on nine right next to the property. So if you just do some math now, let's just say that same 10,000 square foot retail on the front times, let's just give an, uh, an average number or be conservative. We can say 1550, that was the lowest, right? If we don't wanna be conservative time, um, which is the $155,000 per year, right? Now, what's interesting is that, again, th that was triple net. So they're gonna pay all expenses. Obviously, you might have to have, you're gonna have to have a vacancy rate in there of probably around 10%, but to give you some type of retrospect, so we're gonna do times 0 0.9, that's with the vacancy rate. Uh, so let's just take around 140, 139.5, divide it into, let's just say an easy 8% cap rate. That The front building will be worth something at an 8% cap rate. Maybe you can get a seven and a half, but somewhere between the 1.75 range and two million bucks, okay? So this isn't kind of give you a you know, gauge, like, okay, yeah, they were trading for $200 a square foot because that was the math we did, but to do the math of like what the actual rent or the rents are in this market, and obviously if you got to rent it for 17 bucks a foot, 17 and a half bucks a foot, $18 a foot or more, this number would be higher, but you know, very, very conservative numbers in regards to an income, this is where you'd come at rent-wise, uh, you know, or valuation-wise. So now uh, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna flip it over to now for lease, we're gonna be doing industrial and we're gonna try to pull the same exact comps same exact time frame. You can see that there's absolutely zero lease comps uh, that have traded or have been signed in that period of time. We're going to try to go back a little bit, see if anything else has been done. Two years, you know, in 2021, you know, again, this is $9.50 and back in 2021 for 8,000 square feet. So let's see what the other one is. $9.50 for both of these, right? I guess that's the same. So $9.50 for both, which is good news. So you can take like $9.50 or maybe $10. I mean, obviously it's been going up. It's a fantastic market. And if you're not getting enough comps, because I definitely would recommend that we try to pull better, it's kind of hard, but maybe 
maybe you can go out a little bit further. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, we're gonna clear and we're just gonna go all the way up for nine. Let's see if we can have any other comps. <laughs> Not a great comp, but $6 modified gross in 2022. I mean, it's it's also on Lane's Mills, not Route 9. So anyways, there's not a lot of industrial on this on this corridor. So it's important to pay attention to the fact that, you know, these are probably gonna be your best comps you're gonna have. Maybe you can go a little bit north, you go a little bit south. Like, let's just say we do this, right? Uh, we're gonna try to keep zooming out. Uh, I'm gonna do this one more time and see if we get anything different. So let's try, go all the way over nine. Apologize for like, you know, I don't know. If the, let's see if we can go back now to lease costs and we're also gonna minimize the time frame, right? We're, we went back to 2021. Let's go back to one year ago. Now let's see if we can get anything decent here. If we can pull in any type of idea, you can see withheld, which is not always fun. This one here assigned $16 triple net. Now, obviously this building, I'm actually very familiar with that building. Gorgeous building, 15 triple net, and a little, you know, a little bit better of an idea. But this is also not. None of these are on Route 9. These are off of Route 9. Let's see if I can try to find anything on Route 9, which is just not so much, right? This is giving you a little bit of an idea where they're coming in at. But all different markets here, right? 19, 1950 modified gross. You know, this is being marketed at $11 to $13. So even if we just went at 10 bucks um, or higher, right? And you could say 12, just to be conservative, right? Like we you know we want to be as conservative as possible. If we take, let's just say. $12 triple net, 12 bucks triple net, okay? You can take 12 times 20,000, I can get 240 grand divided by that 8% cap rate again, you get 3 million bucks. Now they said, we said five. Now, uh, obviously you can go off of a seven and a half cap that was at $12 triple net. You can get maybe, maybe you can get 13, maybe 14, maybe $15 triple net. But anyways, you know, you can see like, look, you know, this is why people were a little bit worried about doing the deal, even though, you know, at 7 million, just off of the price per square foot factor, it doesn't tell the whole story. Price per square foot doesn't, it only tells so much of the story. So if we do the math now, you know, that's a $3 million valuation for the two warehouses, plus the $1.75 million uh, retail in the front. The property's only worth uh, $4.75 million when you're all said and done. Divide that by the 30,000 square feet roughly, it's only $158 a square foot. What's interesting is that people, you know, uh, you know, this is off of an eight cap. You can end up selling it for a seven or better, right? Like, that, I mean, obviously you're gonna change the valuation of the property. And because of the location, maybe like, again, maybe we can get a seven, which, you know, you can take the, um, let's say the 240,000, which I didn't take the vacancy off, which you can take like, let's just say 10%, so times 0.9, plus the 139, uh, 500, which was the previous uh, income minus the 10%, equals 355 divided. Like, look, if you got a 6% cap rate, it's now worth 6 million and not 4.75 anymore. So uh, you have that ability Right, and at that price, right, divided by 30,000 square feet, you have 197 and a half dollars a square foot. So, this is where you can start painting the picture of how to evaluate properties, how to look at properties, how to get a sense for them just by using CoStar to try to pull per square foot comps. But this will give you a really good idea with the leasing on that side. Obviously, you're not going to do leasing comps here for multifamily, you're not going to get the same response. Playing around with these numbers and trying to move certain things where if you can achieve certain results, where the valuations will be at, and how likely is it for you to achieve those results, aka the rental numbers, right? Like, um, you know, at what price is it likely for you to rent the property for? So that property, and again, we put this in front of several people and I want to be clear, what's important to note about this type of property was that the, the owner was not willing to lay out a single dollar of their own money. Like we had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars before closing, which like, you know, so this was, you know, a very interesting deal where we had to lay out hundreds of thousands of dollars, the buyer did, had to lay out hundreds of thousands of dollars prior to closing in order to get this deal done, right? To handle the CO and make sure the township was okay with all these types of things. I mean, it was a unbelievable nightmare to even try to get this deal to the closing table. So just keep in mind that like, there's a lot of these nuances that really do change the effect that just because you're pulling comps and this gives you a rough idea, it again does not tell the entire story. What's important to do is, you know, get in touch with the buyer, get in touch with the seller and really have, you know, deep communication and an understanding of what's actually occurring at the property, what's the actual situation, because that will tell uh, in combination with all the information and data that you can get online, the full story and allow you to evaluate property. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys need more support, please feel free to comment down below. We answer every single comment. Again, this is just a quick rundown of how to evaluate properties on CoStar. And if you guys need more support, go in the, the description down below. There's a lot of free resources for you guys as well. Appreciate you guys watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.